Big Brother 21, Episode 2. Things are moving fast this season, which is nice. Um, after the first episode, I thought maybe we'd see in Episode 2 the four uh, banished house guests um, be named. I didn't think we'd even have the competition necessarily last night, but we did. Um, we also had a house of head of household competition. Um, which I didn't think was going to happen until uh, another episode or two. So things are moving fast. Uh, we're going to get into that. We're going to go over the uh, head of household competition, how that went. Um, talk about some alliances that are starting to develop in the house. And uh, we'll have another look at what's going on next week, I guess. We'll have a little bit of a look ahead. Uh, sorry if I'm stumbling through my words today. I have only had one cup of coffee, so things are really tough for me right now. Okay, so episode two started with, uh, where do we leave off? It was Jackson, um, I guess who's now going by Mickey, because Jack and Jackson is too, uh, too similar, which I'm fine with. So I got to adjust to Jackson being Mickey, and otherwise, in the long term, that's going to help us all out. So we had Mickey, the camp director, um, up in his room, and we had all the house guests kind of campaigning to him of, here's who you should nominate and why, blah, blah, blah. Um, so we saw everyone going through that. Everyone except we did not see uh, Kemi go up there. We actually saw her talk to uh, the diary room, explaining why she wasn't going up there. And it's exactly what I thought she was going to do, and that's why I had her ranked so low coming into the season. Um, very strong, independent woman and good for you and all that. Um, but that's not going to go so well in this game. Now, the explanation that she gave was, uh, sorry, Jackson, but I'm not going to scratch your back because mine hasn't even been scratched yet. Um, we're on week one. Like this is the first opportunity anybody has had to scratch any backs. So this is your first chance to get a back scratch. So that's how, like, it's a give and take. What are you thinking? That's a problem with our society today. Everybody wants to, to take first before they give. And sometimes that's just not how it works, right? When you're in a position where you need something, sometimes you have to give a little bit first. And uh, I think Kemi would have benefited with a little bit of a different uh, personality there. Um, yeah, so Jack and Jackson are bromancing up in his room. Jack gives him the explanation that he needs. He goes, look, here's your explanation. I'm just going with three of the four uh, camp director nominees, which is exactly what I said last episode. I said, any reason is a good reason when you don't have any reason at all, really. Um, so sure enough, what did we see? We saw uh, Jackson, a.k.a. Mickey, uh, nominated all, or I guess banished, all three of the other camp director uh, candidates, volunteers, however we want to look at that. So we saw Cliff go up, we saw David go up, and we saw uh, Jessica go up, which I knew was exactly going to happen. Uh, the only thing I wasn't sure about was who the fourth person would be. I thought it might be Sam. I thought Sam might be someone that would be kind of a go-with-the-flow kind of guy, someone that Mickey could uh, nominate without worry about a grudge uh, being held against him if he did survive. Um, turns out the attitude of the grudge uh, came from David. David was not thrilled to be uh, being put in the banish competition. Um, now when, when Mickey kind of broke the news to David that like, hey man, I'm going to banish you and here's why, um, they did like a whole pawn talk conversation and I kind of rolled my eyes at that because uh, it wasn't really a pawn situation. Uh, pawn is more of someone who, look, we really want person A to go home. So we need to put up a pawn who everybody likes that we don't have to worry about going home in a vote. There's no vote for the banishment. So it doesn't matter how much you're liked, David. It's just a straight up competition. So the whole pawn talk thing was kind of BS. Um, anyways, I didn't really... I mean, it's semantics, so whatever. It is what it is. Uh, the whole camp director thing um, is kind of just meh at this point, and I do think we're going to see that uh, play out for 
uh, I bet you three, four, maybe five weeks. Um, there are two aspects to this camp director thing that I like, absolutely love that yellow camp director t-shirt that uh, Mickey was wearing all episode. I think it's just, they nailed it. They hit it right on the head. It's just like that Stranger Things going for the, you know, 80s aesthetic. I think they just perfectly nailed that camp director look with that t-shirt. So I know it's something stupid for me to be excited about, but I thought that was just perfect. Um, the other thing I loved was that squirrel, that little squirrel assassin that was coming around throwing his sack over the Banish people. Like I, it took me a few minutes when Mickey went upstairs to do his banishments and then we saw the squirrel coming through the house with his sack. I didn't clue in right away that he was going through and taking away the banished people. I think it even said banished on his little nutsack. Can I say that? Nutsack? Anyways, um, yeah, I'm pretty sure it said banished right on it, but I didn't clue in at first. I thought just, okay, while well, Mickey's up there making his decisions and debating things, there's just going to be some shenanigans in the house to kind of keep the other house guests entertained and keep us distracted. Um, but no, it turns out it was definitely the banishment um, went down via squirrel nutsack kidnapping, I guess. Um, so yeah, we saw Cliff go, we saw David go, we saw Jessica go. And we saw Kemi go, which, I mean, I'm not surprised about at all. The whole, I'm not scratching your back because mine hasn't been scratched yet. I mean, if you come into this house with that kind of mindset, uh, that's exactly what's going to happen. So I really think she's going to see that a lot of that this year. And I don't think that's going to go well for her. So she's definitely staying in my early evictions category for this season. Um, as far as who came back from the banishment... Uh, spoiler alert, but if you guys are watching this, then you have to have seen the first two episodes so far. Um, but Cliff was the first one back in the house, and I was high-fiving my daughter next to me. I was so excited to see Cliff back in the house. Uh, her and I both were rooting for Cliff. Uh, the other three, uh, I was kind of in the mindset where if any of those go home, uh, I'm fine with it. But I really wanted to see Cliff survive, which he did. Um, Cliff was pretty pumped himself to be back, um, which was nice. He even, uh, gave mention to some of the other, uh, previous, you know, older, uh, house guests in previous seasons that have gone home. Uh, I mentioned Glenn, Jody, and Steve. Uh, but I do think that Cliff has something that, uh, none of those three had. I think because he is a, you know, a big brother super fan, he realizes kind of the role he needs to play, especially early on. And on top of that, he's just cool. Like, I think uh, two seasons ago, Steve was a, a police officer or something. Some, he was some sort of law enforcement officer. And he was just a total, like, narc personality. Like, nobody, never mind the fact that he was old, he was just not, he didn't fit in. And I think even though Cliff is old, he's kind of like that, you know, we all had that friend growing up where, you know, whenever we went to hang out at that friend's house, their dad was always just like, He's super lame, but like in the cheesiest, fun, cool way. Like just the kind of guy whose dad jokes were like actually funny, you know? So I think uh, the fact that Cliff survived this first one, I think that's good. And I, I do think, I do like the position he's in moving forward. Um, so Kemi and Jessica also survived, which means David, you're gone. Bye bye. Um, for now. So Julie did, you know, use those ominous words like your game is over for now, um, indicating, I think, pretty obviously there's going to be some sort of a battle back competition. <sighs> Who knows at what point in the season that's going to be. Um, one question I've got as far as this battle back competition, is it going to be only eligible for uh, the banished, like the people who get evicted via banishment? Or is it also going to include uh, people who get straight up voted out? So I guess maybe that'll be a question we get answered later in the season. Um, after that, we had some more developments on the Alliance front. Uh, Jackson, a.k.a. Mickey. Sorry, it's going to take me a few, few of these to get that sorted out. So we have Mickey and Jack bromance going down uh, early in the episode when... Uh, when Jack was campaigning of like, hey, you know, just put up the other three and then we'll figure out a fourth from there. 
and Mickey liked that idea. So they kind of broke out and Mickey was like, well, let's just lock this down right now. Like you and me to the end, we got to do this power thing. And then what do you know? Oh, Isabella happens to be in the room and she kind of lucked her way into this awesome three-way alliance with two pretty good power players. Um, I do like Isabella. I think she had a really good episode tonight. Uh, she seems like fun and friendly. She's cute. Um, she's, so far, she's happened to be in the right place at the right time. But I think that, you know, her, her personality is helping that. You know, if she had an abrasive personality like uh, Kemi, for example, you know, there's a reason Kemi wasn't in the room just hanging out uh, with these two guys when they happened to come up with this this official bromance deal, right? So I think that's going to work out well for Isabella moving forward. Um, we did have another look at uh, Tommy and Christy who know each other from outside of the house. Uh, on my last episode, I had questions about uh, how that relationship went down, if it was an ugly breakup, if it was amicable. Uh, we got that question answered tonight. It was definitely, by the sounds of things, a pretty mm, gnarly breakup which most tend to be after, you know, being together for seven years. Um, but it does look like these two are going to at least try uh, to set the ugliness aside and realize that, you know, they got to bury the hatchet, whatever that hatchet may be, at least in the short term. Tommy even said, you know, in the diary room to the cameras that, you know, I hope my family can forgive, uh, forgive me when they watch this and I'm kind of, you know, teaming up with the enemy but they just realize like i've got to do what i've got to do here um so that was cool to see um and then we did see that during the hoh competition it was actually those two that were the last the last two people standing um and tommy did drop so spoilers again uh christy is the hoh this week but before tommy dropped i mean during the uh the diary room interviews like she said like you know if he drops, like I've got him 100%, like he is safe, right? So, so that was cool. I do, I don't know. It might blow up at some point this season. Like they're going to have to have some sort of a private hash out of whatever did go bet down between his family member and herself. Um, so maybe things will blow up at that point, you know, because everybody likes to think that they're right. Um, so we'll see. But those, those two people both seem to be getting along. They both, seem to understand that like it's a game they got to do what they got to do you know they got to keep this whole we know each other top secret so it'll be interesting to see how that plays out um yeah alliance wise we had uh, the three boys uh jack mickey and nick macaroni who as you can see there is my favorite to win it all another good episode for nick he did nothing to get dethroned from that power ranking of number one. Um, but he paired up with the two, I guess, most physical threats in the game. Um, but he's doing it in such a low-key, like, under-the-radar way that I think I, he's just doing it so well right now. So I was happy to see him pair up with those two because uh, I do think they are going to be comp beasts when it comes to the physical stuff. Um and then the three of them decided, like, let's do an alliance of six, but let's get three girls in, which I'm, I'm glad to see. I, I always hate when it's an all-girls or an all-guys alliance. I like seeing the mix. It's always more interesting, so that'll be good uh, moving forward. So, of course, the three girls they got were Christy, Isabella, and Holly. Um, and they talked about, like, six is good. We're, we're strong with six. With six, we have the numbers, which... Like, they don't really have the numbers. I mean, uh, now that David's gone, we're down to a, a house of 15. So come vote time, to have the numbers, you need eight, right? Um, but six is still good, and they only have to pull in two people um, each vote. So, I mean, six is, is a good size, but they don't officially have the numbers, right? Um, one thing with the girls, though, is if we do expand this alliance, I do think uh, the numbers grow to eight pretty easily because Christy's going to have Tommy. Um, whichever way that pack of six, and we don't have a name for it yet, um, but whatever way that pack of six wants to vote, she's going to be able to uh, protect Tommy. So any discussion of Tommy getting thrown out, 
she's going to be able to, you know, vouch for him and we'll see what kind of sway she has in the alliance. But it'll just be easier to go with someone other than Tommy um, rather than, you know, butt heads, especially early on um, in that regard. She'll also be able to get Tommy to vote with the six. So whatever the six wants, they can plus Tommy in there for seven. Um, Isabella doesn't really have any uh, side person to pull in yet. Um, but she's just kind of going with the flow and there's nothing wrong with that. Um, but Holly uh, did make a comment that I found interesting when uh, the Banishing Squirrel was walking around. When Cliff was first uh, put into the nutsack, Holly was standing in the, in the kitchen with him and she seemed quite upset. She, you know, she commented on how like, oh, like I don't want to see uh, Cliff go. He reminds me so much of my dad. And uh, so I do think that, like, in that regard, uh, same way we're going to include Tommy in this alliance of six, we're also going to include Cliff in this alliance of six. Um, I think any mention of Cliff's name, Holly's going to have that sort of, uh, like, well, you know, like, he's not a comp threat. She's going to justify, like, why, you know, there's no rush to get him out or whatever. And as long as he can continue to make them laugh and be fun, and I'm sure he's going to be a good cook in the kitchen in that regard and stuff. Um, I think that's going to bode well for his uh, short to medium term survival. So I think that's uh, that's a, that's good news for Cliff. Um, we did have the HOH comp, as I, as I mentioned already, who won. But at the HOH competition, we learned the extra duty of the camp director, and this was super, like, bleh. Uh, his influence on the HOH competition was basically you just had to assign pairs of who was paired up for this endurance competition. I don't know what effect being paired up with who made any sort of a difference. Like there wasn't any sort of balance. They weren't, it wasn't tied together in a three legged race. It was just two people are holding on to the same pillar on different sides. And there was lots of room to hold on. So there was no real like strategy there. And I know the show kind of like tried to play it up as like, oh, here's this big power you've got. And Mickey was like, well, I'm going to try and pretend that like my strategy is no strategy. And it's like, who the heck cared anyways? Like you, even if you had a strategy to try and sabotage someone, I don't think you could have in that competition. So I don't know. I kind of cringe at those moments where it's like, you guys are trying to make this show more entertaining than it is. And you don't need to, like, it's fine, but don't, like, add that extra layer of drama to try and make things interesting. It is it is what it is on its own, and that's that's enough. Um, but yeah, so that was basically how the first, um, the first uh, week went. So we did see the banishment kind of play out. Um, we saw the HOH competition, Christy won, so we know Tommy's going to be safe this week. That Alliance of Six is going to be safe this week. So Cliff, most likely, safe this week. Um, so yeah, we'll see how the rest shakes out. Um, we're going to have nominations on Sunday. So come back. Uh, I'm going to have another episode kind of summarizing and this sort of thing for Sunday's episode. Um, that'll be on YouTube on Monday. Um, also on the Sunday show, we're going to have a new twist, Julie said, which is the Wacktivity competition. Now, we don't know what that is, but we do know there's going to be some sort of a secret power. So we'll find out more about that on Sunday. Sunday will be a good episode. Um, and then Tuesday, we got the veto competition. Uh, Wednesday will be evictions. Plus, Julie mentioned we're going to find out something to do with this David uh, banishment twist. So... Um, yeah, if you like this video, uh, like it if you like it, subscribe if you really like it, and hit the bell for notifications if you really, really ridiculously liked it. Um, yeah, we'll be back here on Monday for a recap of Sunday's show, and then it's going to be Mondays and Fridays um, all summer long. So just as we close out the show here, let's just have a look at the updated uh, power rankings for this week. Uh, the big movers and shakers, obviously, first eviction I got wrong, not uh, Jessica. It was, in fact, uh, David. So David's gone for now, as Julie says. Um, Nick Macaroni didn't do anything to jeopardize his position as the winner. Top five staying pretty much the same, but I bumped Cliff back up into the top five. Um, just the fact he was able to hold off for now, 
He's aligning himself, whether he knows it or not, with this power six. So I think that's going to protect him through the early phases, um, which, again, I think is great for him. I think the longer he can stay, the better his chances uh, moving forward. So to bump him out, we took... Uh, oh, I can't even think of this lady's name. She's the Dallas Mavericks cheerleader. Oh, She hasn't done much on the show so far. Which isn't a bad thing, especially early, right? You like to keep your head down, stay off the radar. So sorry I'm not so good with the names yet. But so she got bumped from the top five. Um, the other uh, move we made, other than obviously we moved uh, Jessica and David. So David has the notoriety of being first eviction. Um, but we switched Isabella. Isabella's getting bumped up. And uh, Mickey, getting. I think he's going to be an early eviction. It, Mickey... You're playing too hard, okay? Uh, being competitive is great, but man, every conversation he has just feels like he's clenching that square stone jaw of his so hard. Like he just, is, he's here and he's here to win, you know? And I think that uh, this, you know, this alliance of six, this power six is going to protect him for so far. But I think as soon as someone outside that alliance... Uh, wins HOH, Jackson's going to be in trouble. Like, he's got this power six to protect him, but he's going to be the first target if anyone outside that power six wins. So for that reason and that reason alone, I'm putting him in my early evictions category just because I, f I have a hard time seeing this power six running the table, right? There's going to be some sort of brain puzzle-based uh, competition or just luck based, right? Like you can't just win it on pure physicality alone. Not saying that they're all stupid, but you know, random stuff happens where it's, you know, roll the ball and it's up a curved wall and it lands in a whatever highest score wins, right? Like there's no, I mean, there's skill, but there's a lot of luck involved in those competitions. So, the, you know, it's a prime type of competition for someone outside this power six to win. And I think if that happens, Mickey, you're going to be, you know, the target that week. Um, you're just, you're playing too hard, bro. So, all right, guys. Well, that's my episode for this Friday. Uh, Mario Maker 2 just came out and I am pumped. Me and my daughter are going to spend the whole rainy weekend designing and playing each other's levels. And we're going to be sharing those kind of videos uh, on my YouTube channel. So if you came here for the big brother but you're also interested in Nintendo, Super Mario, come give those videos a check out too. Those are going to be a lot of fun. Um, if you guys have a Nintendo Switch and you have Mario Maker, uh, send me your levels. I want to play them. So um, you guys can either send me uh, you know, comment on the videos with your level codes or your Maker ID. I'll definitely add, be adding everybody up. I want a good variety. Um, I want a sense of community around the levels I play. I'd rather play even if I don't know you at all. This is a better connection than an absolute anonymous stranger. So send me your levels. Again, you can comment on the videos with your level codes, or you can find me on Instagram. I'm also on Twitter. I'll link to that in the description of this video, but I'm definitely more active on Instagram. So you can find me on Instagram um, at inches gaming, inches like the measurement. So at inches gaming on Twitter, just send me a DM. Uh, comment on any of my Mario Maker posts, you know, give me your levels and I want to try them out. I'll be playing them all here on this channel. Otherwise, sorry for that little rant. I know if you guys are here for the big brother, you probably tuned me out, but if not, thanks. Anyways, guys, one more time, like, if you like this video, subscribe, if you really like it and hit the bell, turn notifications on. If you thought it was really, really ridiculously good looking. Bye-bye.